Okay, I believe this is part 10. Yeah, part 10 to what if Deku had the Omnitrix. In the last part, we did the hero or the students versus the heroes and a bit of what Deku did during his internship, but he didn't really have an internship. He just mostly trained with All Might, and basically, All Might wanted Deku to show his abilities to Grand Torino. Everything goes similar to in canon. So, what happens is, in this, we're going over the the training. Yeah, the training. And everyone is a bit stronger than what they are in canon because let's say it had a domino effect since Deku was so much stronger that like he was so much stronger than everyone and kept getting stronger and stronger that everyone decided that they needed to start training. So everyone started training a bit, trying to do stuff they couldn't before. So everyone's a bit stronger than in canon. But when, let's say that since when they began, that they were thinking of what they should do. And is not in this one, so he doesn't run or anything to get stuck under the ground. I mean, they get attacked by the, uh, what is it, by the beast. So they're making a plan of what they should do. This is when Orok, and I'll say, let's say Ida actually. Or Ida says that Deku can fly with mo most of his weird creatures, like he says he can fly with different creatures, and that he could just fly them over there, and Oroku could make them light. Well, uh, well, Midoriya goes to his fastest creature and just flies them over there. Deku says his fastest creature, this the sheer speed if he goes to his fastest limit would tear them to, like, they would be tore apart by the speed. They ha they ask how fast is his fastest creature. He says his fastest creature is his ultimate jet ray form, which can fly across the universe in a couple of seconds. Bakugou calls uh, Deku a liar, saying there's no way he's that fast. Deku, let's say that, I don't know how far they are from the city, I say Deku just turns into Ultimate Jet Ray, and within an instant, he has, let's say, a soda in his hand. So let's say he just flew to his house, went in there, grabbed a soda, and he's just drinking a soda. And then they ask where he got the soda. He said he just was too fast that he didn't even look like he moved. He just went back to his house and drank the, and got a, grabbed a soda. And as he drank it, so they said. So don't go your fastest, just fly us over there. Deku says, then there wouldn't be a point to this test, because the test is to see how easy, like, how long it takes for the class to get there. And if I just fly everyone over there, then it's not going to show anyone's strength. So, they say it's fine, but they say they don't care, they just don't, they just want to go to the camp. And they say that they're fine if they don't, if they're not able to show their strength. And this is when Deku says, "This is a training camp. They're gonna train you to get stronger and stronger. You know that, right?" And this is when some of them that didn't realize it was a training camp are like, they're just depressed at this point because they have to train. But they say they don't care. They just want to go to the camp at this point. And Deku says, "Fine." He has Old Rocker to make everyone light as she does it she's a bit nauseated but she since she's been training she's a bit used to it at this point a little bit she can do her she can use her quirk a lot more without getting as nauseated as before so what Deku does is let's say what Deku does is he quickly but surely oh what is it called he turned into Let's say Big Chill since Big Chill can fly. And let's say Bakugo doesn't want to be with the, any of them. So what he does is he starts flying too. This is when Ida says, uh, Bakugo says that he doesn't need them to fly as he is about to let explosions off. This is when Deku says the only reason he's about to fly, that the only reason Bakugo is about to fly is because he heard Ida because he he yeah, made the idea, and Bakugo, uh, and Bakugo's little brain just finally put it together that he could fly. 
and he doesn't want anyone else to help him fly. But when his arms hurt so bad from the explosions, he's going to go tumbling into the ground. To the ground. As, th as he says this, Deku takes off through the air. And I say within a minute, because he's not trying to hurt anyone. He's, they're already at the camp. But some of them are in pain. Let's see, because the, the wind, like the, the force of the wind pulling them back, hurt a bit. So, yeah. Now, what happens is Bakugo takes, say, an hour to get there. Because he had to take breaks and he kept getting attacked by monsters. So, it's, his, it's a bit harder for him. So, in this, what happens is, uh, what is it, what happens is, everyone gets there, they basically make food and eat, the wild wild pussycats ask them, uh, how they get there so fast, when they got there, they say that they just flew over, Oraka made everyone light, while they, well, Deku flew them over, and that's then why is one student, uh, what is it, they say, then why is one student, uh, just now getting here, they say that, or Deku says that Bakugo, and it, Bakugo is stubborn and just wanted to fly by himself and didn't even think about flying until Ida brought up the idea or thought of the idea. So, after this, uh, after this, they, the Wild Wild Cousy Gats say you shouldn't have relied on one person. This is to see how strong you are. Y'all should have fought through it. This is when Ida says, even if we did fr uh, fight through the forest, Midoriya could have just taken down any and all of the creatures. He could probably destroy the entire forest with just one attack if he wanted. Deku says he, Deku says he doesn't think he's that strong. This is when Ida says, you probably are that strong, you just never needed to use that much power. This is when Bakugo walks in. And starts yelling at them for leaving him behind. This is when Deku tells Bakugo to shut up. Because he's the one who wanted to fly through the air by himself. And has probably done permanent damage to his bones. Not knowing how to use his quirk properly. Bakugo says, what do you know about using a quirk properly? You haven't even had yours for an entire year. Deku says, yeah, I might not have had it for an entire year. But if he says... No, Bakugo says, you barely had it for an entire year. This is when Deku says, yes, I've barely had it for an entire year, and I have already gotten much more powerful than you, and know how to master it, because now I can use any alien for however long I want. And at this point, there should be no one in the world who can stand up to me, because how powerful my creatures are. Bakugo's angry at this is about to throw an explosion before Aizawa comes into the room and tells all of them to just eat and go to sleep because tomorrow we'll start their training. This is when we skip to the training. It's mostly just Deku. Let's say a lot of it is them using the training or like using their quirks, like making it stronger. But since everyone's a bit stronger than usual, let's say you can't really measure how strong Oraka got. Since the ball throw, she got infinite on it. But for uh, like everything else, like everyone else, they're a bit stronger in this because of Deku. And basically, at this point, uh, and basically at this point, I say Aizawa set, says that they should do some combat training. And let's say everyone has done a bit of combat training by themselves, like just throwing punches and stuff like that. But Oraka has learned some takedown techniques, I believe, in the actual series. But in this, Aizawa tells everyone that, yes, it is good that you've gotten a bit stronger. And this is when Ida brings up the point, the only reason they're as strong as they are is because Midoriya made the domino effect where he said that Midoriya was so much stronger that a lot of us decided that we needed to train to catch up to him, which he only gets stronger and stronger, and we haven't even caught up to where he was at the beginning of the year. 
and this is when Isaiah says, yes, it is good your quirks have gotten stronger. Throughout most of the day, you will be training your quirks to make them stronger, but you will also be doing combat training. This is when Aizawa says that you will all be doing combat training against Midoriya. This is when Deku says he doesn't want to fight them all at the same time. Aizawa says you won't fight them all at the same time. You'll just make clones and fight them. Make your clones and fight them at different times. This is when Aizawa says that don't you have the alien to make clone or he says don't you have a creature that can make clones basically or because let's say that since let's say all uh inside aizawa was informed by all my of the different type of creatures he has let's say deku did a lot of combat training with his clones saying yes he does and he says then just make your little creatures just make your little creatures up here to well fight so to fight and at this point Aizawa says or Deku says that since everyone has different quirks each alien is going to try and basically all it's gonna do is just be the opposite of their quirks like the counter to their quirks to try and make stuff like for them to train their quirks and for them to uh, do combat training. So at first, let's say for Oraka to get stronger, what Deku does is, let's say, sin, let's say he turns into, basically, I'm gonna say he turns into a big chill for this, and he just makes a big block of ice, and she has to lift that block of ice with her quirk, multiple times like he just helps everyone out with their quirk training and their combat training like during combat training that's after their quirk training and they start using the quirk and Bakugo is really excited to do combat training because he wants to fight Deku but the actual Deku is on his own training while his clones are fighting and I'd say some of them do beat the clones because like, this is when they say that they beat their clones and let's say Bakugo didn't beat the clones because well Deku doesn't like Bakugo so he went he made his clone for Bakugo especially harder for everyone else this is when he says for anyone that did beat their clones the clones won't hold back next time and will start fighting back because he says that because it works like shadow clones anything the clones see or do the uh that he knows after they merge back together this is when he says that uh that yes you all did good and you are improving but next time the clones will fight back using the watch this is when they let's say Ida says that's right you know the clones didn't even use the watch and they can use the watch this is when Deku says yes they can use the watch they can turn into any alien this is when Ida says, what happens, not Ida, let's say, Kurishima asks, what happens to the clones when you don't need them? Deku says that the clones are a part of him, and what, uh, that they just turn back into their Echo Echo form, that, uh, they just turn, all turn back into their Echo 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 alien form, like their Echo Echo creature. And what the heck was that? Something just really fast flew by me. Anyway. So, he says they just turn back into that creature and, uh, basically, uh, just fuse back together. Now, let's say that the encounter with Koda doesn't happen either, because Deku's really powerful. He's a lot more intimidating in this. And Deku can make an army, basically. Deku is a one-man army. Now, let's say, I don't think I gave Deku his hero name. So, Deku in this... He didn't know what to call himself. And let's say his group, his small group of friends, which is a bit bigger in this because he has a lot more powers and everyone likes him a bit more, kept trying to give him a name. Let's say that at one point, I'll say Ida gave Deku the name the One-Man Army because that's what he is. 
He's a one-man army. He can literally fight anyone by himself. Because he has an army of creatures to turn into. And to fight using them. So Deku's hero name is the one-man army. So I'm going to skip to the uh, attack on the camp. And it's a, it's a lot easier for everyone. Everyone's a lot stronger in this than in canon. So what happens to the villains is they have a lot harder time. And the thing with Coda going to the uh to the rock to his little hideout i'll say that happens still because he just doesn't want to be up near all the future heroes because he still dislikes heroes this is when deku goes after koda basically uh quickly zooms around and his let's say his accelerate form is yeah his ultimate accelerate form which he quickly gets to, he gets there right before, uh, what is it, Coda's about to get hit, he grabs Coda, and Coda disappears, uh, this is when Muscular says he didn't think he was that strong, there's not even any blood left, and this is when he hears Coda uh, basically crying because he got hit, or he was about to die, and he turns around to see Deku holding Coda, and he says that even though, there's, he says to Deku, even though you have a speed quirk brat, you won't be strong enough to beat me. And it's at this point that Deku... Uh, it's at this point that Deku says he has many different forms that he can take that can easily kill muscular. As he says this, let's say he has hold, he's holding Koda, and as he says this, he, put, he tells Koda to go to the other side because... What he's about to turn into is very, very big. Deku in this turns into way big. And as he turns into way big, he starts growing in size. He turns into this weird white and red looking creature. I believe it's red. And he basically stomps or steps on a muscular. And it's at this point that... Muscular is taken down with one hit because he doesn't try and kill Muscular. He just barely st steps on him. And everything goes similar to in canon, but let's say Deku just starts walking around the forest in his way big form. And everyone knows it's Deku because they can see... I think I've had Deku use this form before. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's just say that they can see the giant uh, symbol representing its Deku. Like the Omnitrix symbol. And he's just walking through the forest. And let's say people are starting to go towards him. And right now he has like Coda in his hand. He's just holding Coda on his hand. And he puts Coda down. And let's say that the villains just thought that big uh, like rumbling feeling was just the other villains doing something. But the ones that were attacking, uh, attacking and but like said he was going to kill Pixie Bob is picked up by... Uh, by Deku, not even picked up, he, Deku just, with the motion of his hand, a big gust of wind, throws that guy to the, barely, basically against the tree, knocking him all the way out, and the guy with all the swords is also pushed away as well, and they're wondering who that is, and let's say a couple of students are there, and they say that's Midoriya, that is one of his transformations, you can tell it's him, and they ask, how can you tell it's him, have you seen that transformation before, they say no, but they, actually no, I believe I did make Deku see it, Ida says yes, I've seen it once before, but you can tell if it's a transformation by Midoriya, by the the insignia, basically. The yellow and black symbol that is on most of his creatures. Because it's the same symbol that is on his watch. And they see this big symbol just sitting. I think it's on his chest. I'm going to say it's on his chest. That's just sitting on his chest. And a lot of the villains have basically been defeated by accident because Deku just keeps walking and walking. And a lot, the villains are attacked, like, defeated a lot easier. But let's say that... What is it called? Let's say that uh, Mr. Compress, he's still got Bakugo and uh, Tokiyami. But Deku just basically cups his hands together like he sort of, like, smacks... Like, if you were trying to clap a fly, like, squish it with your two hands he basically does that but cups his hands to catch him and throws him to the ground 
So he throws Mr. Compress to the ground, and this is when, like, the marbles, basically, come out of his mouth. Like, both of them, and they basically turn back to normal. Bakugo's angry at this, because he, then he starts yelling that he didn't need Deku's help to escape. And this is when Deku tells Bakugo to shut up, because even though Bakugo has gotten a bit more powerful than what he was in the school, like, in middle school... He is still nowhere near de his level, because he has, he has one alien, he says he has one creature that can defeat anyone within an instant. And he doesn't need, he doesn't need Bakugo to say that he didn't need anyone's help, because Bakugo will always need someone's help, because he's not very strong. As Deku uh, starts turning smaller and smaller, and they, let's say the Nomus still got away. So, I'm going to end it off here. I'm going to record the last part, which is part 11 after this. So, goodbye.